Football fans, Gooners, welcome to another edition of the Positively Uncensored Arsenal podcast. I'm your host, Shutter, and as usual, my expert, my friend, my colleague for years in this business, Blackbird George. Good morning to you. At least it's morning here in the Caribbean. Well, it's a good morning here. It's, a, it's the goodest of good mornings. <laughs> really? What, are yeah. you seeing signs of spring? No, just reveling in yesterday's results, though. Oh, yes, George. Well, I could have not, that often, not often you wake up the day after and still feel absolutely elated. Oh, the buzz, the buzz, the buzz. No, I, I, that, that's as good as, I've, as we've had it. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You know, George... I um, will tell the audience that I didn't watch the match live. I watched it um, on a recorded basis because I have, um, you know, I'm very busy on a Saturday doing some stuff that is critical. But I never look on Twitter. I never look on EPL.com. I save everything until I go and watch the match. And, George, I was pleasantly surprised. And to be honest, audience, I always i am there sitting in my chair and I'm saying, we're going to score on all the time we fell behind, we're going to score, we're going to score. But I never in the life of me believed that we could end this on the last kick. <laughs> it was something to behold, wasn't it, George? Well, yeah, I mean, I had a bit of a nightmare. I couldn't, I missed the first half completely. I watched it now, obviously. Yes. But yes. I missed the first half completely because I couldn't get a stream of any description. Uh -huh. Then someone gave me one which was, Going in and out and buffering, and yes, so I only got half a look at the second half. And uh, funnily enough, at the end, when the corner came in and was nodded out towards Eddie, yes, just as it landed at his feet, it buffered and it went back two minutes, two seconds, <laughs> yes. And, and, I, and I saw it and I thought, oh. It, He'll hit this here, but, you know, there's 22 people between him and the goal. Right. And then he, he brought it down, and it buffered again. It went back <laughs> another two seconds. <laughs> yes. And so it was the third time of asking when he hit it. Yes. And I just couldn't believe it. He screamed it in. Yes. Uh, well, it, it was almost like my laptop knew to build it up for me. You know, <laughs> gave me yes. three goals, that's it. Yes. Oh, yeah. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Well, and mayhem. Absolute mayhem in the stadium. Uh, I can imagine. The, the, res, the, the reaction of the players who were on the bench, who had been on the pitch and gone on the bench. And yes. Mikel Arteta, all his staff, yes. the fans, the stewards. It was... Absolutely crazy. George, I mean, you can't help but 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 I have the belief, have the conviction that Arsenal has the momentum. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the understatement of the year, George. Oh, I mean, I, I, you're thinking the worst, aren't you? I mean, I, I'm looking at it. We go 2-0 down, and I'm thinking. It's one of these games. I mean, we've dominated the game. 80 odd percent possession. God knows that. Oh, George. Well, while you're speaking, I'm sorry, I'll add this to the stream <coughs> and, 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 and to support what you're saying. But please go ahead. Look at these stats. 80% total match game possession, George. Yeah. And <laughs> I, 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 I think of the 90, 19%. Yes. Probably only about two of those percent was the ball in play. The rest of the time was them fucking about wasting time. Well, uh, listen, George, I don't, I don't blame them. <laughs> no, I don't blame them. You're saying it, it, yeah. it, it, it was even more domination than that. I mean, yes. it was ridiculous. Yes. Uh, chances. <laughs> Yes, it, but look like George. Looking at it, and I'm thinking, this is one of those games, you know. Exactly, you, that's yes, you, yes. You come off a pitch at the end, you think, how oh, the fuck did we lose that? And in my head, I'm going, 
two points clear. We have to play City at City. They'll win that. That's as a point behind. Yes. Fucking hell. We're not going to win it. Fucking hell. <laughs> Do win well, the Can't fucking, can't cope with this. And then, of all people that scores, Thomas Party. <laughs> well, he had to score, George, because he, the second goal, he was asleep. <laughs> well, the guy, you well, know. Yeah, that's another thing. I mean, whether Jorginho's still feeling ill or not, I don't know. Yes. But I was a little bit surprised when he started. Uh, and I've been thinking today, actually, I, I watched the game back. And, uh, I've been harsh on party over the last two and a half years. Yes. And I'm thinking, is it confirmation bias? Do I just notice him giving the ball away when I... And I overlook other players doing it when Jacker does it or Jorginho does it. Do I do I ignore that? But I, I concentrate on party. And uh, so I thought I'm going to concentrate on him and try and not be too judgmental. But he didn't have a good game. He, you know, he, George, he, he seems to me that if you're relying on him breaking up play, and he does, and he's got the time. To make a pass, it can do that, no problem. It's the quick interchanging of passes that it, they go astray. You know, the, the one touch Yes, uh, yeah, I mean, he's... Well, my... Let and, me and, this, and maybe it's unfair, unfair to judge him on that, because if he could do that, and the defensive stuff he does, and the physicality, he'd be a truly world-class player. You know, and he... Not everybody is a world class player, but he certainly he played some good balls yesterday. He was at fault for that goal, but he did score, and uh, and he did save a few situations on the break as well. Uh, yes, and and he did recover the ball a lot of times. Where you think, well, th this could be dangerous here, and he came in and saved the day. So he contributed to the to the result, and. Uh, I'm going to try and not be as harsh on him in the future. Well, you know, George, um, I was in the practically the same boat like you. Um, because at the very beginning of the commentary, um, that Nigerian striker, Efran Okoku, I can't pronounce his name, but you know, he's, he was a um, the comments man. And like all the, um, the, the traditional English commentators, um, week in, week out, since Partey got injured, they were like, oh, Arsenal cannot, you know, you know, cannot wait to welcome back Partey. So I'm like, you know, Georgina, and you and I have been discussing, and I, Georgina has been excellent. And so, the first, you know, so I had to observe him, <laughs> you know, and if, just in case we are just, just too, too harsh on him. And, you know, sitting back in midfield, I just thought his passing was safe. I said, fine. But I just did not see the through balls that I would have expected from Giorgino. The other thing I noticed about him, you're quite right. He bar he, you know, he he barged in on Solanke a couple of times and uh, you know, recovered the ball. Uh, yeah. but I was thinking, George, just before you comment, that after the second goal, if he didn't score, <laughs> he would have been in a world of hurt. That was my thought process. Well, yeah, I mean he, he gave away the the foul. For the free kick that right. led, to the, that led right. to the corner, right? So he, like, there was two, he had two errors there, uh, and he did let him. I mean, it was terrible defending. Yes. But yes. Uh, yes. but he's not a central defender; he's a midfield enforcer. Yes. You know, just because he's big and black doesn't mean he's going to be a, a great in 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 the uh, in the box. So exactly. Exactly. I don't know. He, he certainly contrary. I mean. He, in the balance of the team, he's good. Yes. Uh, in the balance of that particular team, was he as good? Because Granit Xhaka wasn't there. Uh, so the balance of the midfield was a little bit out. Like, I'm not criticising Vieira. I thought Vieira did all right. Yes. But he's not Granit Xhaka. Yes. Uh, so maybe Party didn't look quite as well, as good as he does when... when Yak is there to help him out and put his shoulder to the wheel as well. Yes. 
but you know, George, going back to the, I mean, despite all of that, we were, I mean, in the first half, we were creating chances. Second half, of course, obviously. We, I mean, we created chances after chance, you know, the 31 shots. I remember back last year, the year before, you know, um, the first two years of our, our Teto, we, we, we were lamenting on this pod- podcast how we didn't create any chances, we didn't create any shots. But yeah, we, we, are, we are a much different team today. Yeah, and uh, the, we probably made more chances yesterday than we did in six months last year. Yes. It was... Uh, I thought we played well. I mean, we, we dominated the game. There's flaws to the team at the moment. We don't have a centre forward. We lost. I was, coming, I was coming to that. And uh, Martinelli. I mean, he flatters to deceive. You remember that breakaway where he, instead of looking up, I mean, he had uh, loads of them. They all like got their heads down and they flew up the pitch to support him. Yes. And there was three of them strung out to level with the penalty spot. Wide open, just waiting for him to slide the ball across. Right. And instead of that, he tries to put one in the top corner of the goalie's near post. I mean, it, madness, really. It's decision making. Yes, yes. His decision making. All the yeah. things he does well, he does just as many things poorly. I mean, he's just that second or two behind in his thinking for me. Uh, when he doesn't have to think at all, mm-hmm. he's very good. When he yeah. has to actually think, when he has options, you know, he doesn't... Oh, I mean, that was like, you know, Messi Ozil. You can guarantee he would make... If he had three options, he would pick the right one 99 yeah. times out of 100. Whereas Martinelli is picking the wrong option most yeah. times for me. Given an option, if he has no option, he has to go straight for goal or just fire it. You know, you've seen the goals he scores are just like instinctive strikes, aren't yes, they? Like, yes, they'll fine, have to think. yes, you know, from from cute angles and one thing and another. But uh, th- there's no thinking involved. Uh, it's uh, I'm, I'm sure he'll improve in that area, but oh, yes, he, he wants to be doing it quickly because. Eddie looked far more effective. Not Eddie. Uh, Reese Nelson looked more effective than him on that left wing. Well, I so want to talk about that, George. First of all, yeah, I want to also talk about that a little bit. I'm sure people are, you know, maybe interested now in your opinion. But um, it was it was a it was an experimental uh, front line of three, in my opinion. And you know what? I give Arteta credit. A year or two ago, he would never have done that. But you know. Um, well, I don't know anybody doing because he was yeah. he was stuck for uh, options really, right? Wasn't he? Right. So, um, and then um, when Trussard went down, he, he brought an, um, Smith Rowe. I don't think Smith Rowe was 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 very effective. I mean, you know, no. he's not. Just, yeah, but, but, he, I, but, he, but he, he, did, he did give us the assist, didn't he, for the first goal? Yes, yes, yes. The one that Ben White scored. But you no, know, George, the one that well, the party scored, wasn't it? Um, it was, it was, I have it in my notes, guys. Don't no, no, we're not going to labor. No, he got an assist, and uh, yeah. no, the one that Ben White got, uh, that was uh, Reese Nelson fired it. Reese Nelson cross, yes, 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 his first contribution, exactly. Yeah, um, I'm not going to go back in my notes just to make this point, George, but I think that, um, but when, um when he when he took Trussard off, he put Martinelli as a, the central striker, mm. and this is what I wanted to to brought, bring up to you. Um, mm. Did that really work? Is or did he just um, you know? Well, no, it did, I don't. It always needs most. It didn't work, but mm. it probably worked better than if he had put to Saka or Reese Nelson there, which were his other options. You know that. They're Sorry. definitely better out on the wing. Uh, Martinelli. No, Reese Nelson and Saka are definitely better wide than they, okay. they would be through the middle. Yes. So you, I'd rather lose him from the left and put uh, Reese Nelson there 
than than otherwise. But it wasn't. I mean, it wasn't actually. He didn't actually replace him, did he? With Reese Nelson, he replaced Emil Smith Rowe. Yes, I know. I know. But it was done in stages, wasn't it? Yes, so, yes. And I think uh, I think that turned the game really, bringing him on for right. Emil Smith Rowe. Because I agree with you. He, 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 he didn't look very effective, but why would you when you've been out for that long? Well, yes. having, said, having said that, Reese Nelson's played as little as uh, Emil Smith Rowe, and he did look very effective and sharp. What happened to him? I remember I was doing a match where he scored two goals, and we were I had him on. Um, you know, he's, been injured. he's been injured. Yeah. Okay. But you know, Reese was celebrated. In fact, he was ahead of uh, Smith Rowe at one point in when in the in the, in the youth ranks. But I mean, good for him. Pardon? He was a captain, wasn't he? Yeah, he something was like that. He was. Yeah, he. I mean, he was one of the future stars. I, I'm, I'm so happy yeah, for him, yeah, George. Yeah. I'm really happy for him. Put it this way: there was more talk about him in the under 21s than there was about Saka when he was in the under 21s. Correct. He was he, he was the big, big star of the future, which didn't <laughs> come to pass. But uh, he was he has been injured a lot, so there's yeah. time yet. He yes. certainly looked good. Certainly looked good. Yes, I, I for that you know, goal alone. For that goal alone, he will forever have a place in our hearts. Yes, yes, yes. It's gonna be a as as your as your boy when I want to come to him, but as Burkham say, I mean it's perhaps one of the most uh, famous moments in the history of the Emirates. Uh, and we have seen some big goals scored, but that was, you know, it's a, it's a football in the, you know, in the ebb and flow of football scoring. George scoring in the last minute in the death is always, you know, cathartic, you know? Yeah, yeah it is, but it's usually a, you know, it's very rarely a, an absolute worldy like that, yes. is it? It's usually something bungled in from a corner, right? yes. bouncing off somebody's backside and going in. And very rarely you see someone lash it with his wrong foot. Like yes. That. yes. The technique, because like I keep saying, nine times out of ten, shots like that by anybody, anybody, go over the or into row Z, let alone somebody doing it. On his wrong foot, and he shifted it onto his wrong foot as well. Yes, yes, it, yes, yes. It, it wasn't there by accident. No, you know, it didn't land there. He landed it. It came to him. He chested it down to what cut to his left because there was somebody closing down his right. Right. And, uh, he, he landed it. What a strike! What a goal! Yes. What a moment! Yes, yes, yes. Um. And speaking of reactions, George, I think um, you know, Bird Camp on your blog has it right, you know. <laughs> this is the quote, and I'm I'm giving him all you know the credit because George, neither of us write much these days, if at all. <laughs> but Birdie, we are we appreciate what you write here, and you were absolutely right. It was we went well the headline is I think is your we the, the, the Emirates went nuclear, so did the fans in the rest of the world, my friend. Mass delirium. I thought it was um quite a thing to behold. And but what it marked, George, I think that what it marked is that we remain five points ahead of our, our only rival, to be honest, George, for the title, and that is Manchester City. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean Liverpool play United today. I fancy Liverpool. Uh and that'll put them what fifteen points behind us. <laughs> yes. No. Yeah. The, 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 the media are trying to talk it up into a three-way race. You know, no, there's somehow, not three-way here, George. I somehow shoehorn uh, Manchester United into it. It's a bit like there being a three-horse race for who wins the next general election in this country, and trying to say the Liberal Democrats might do it. You know, it's, right, right. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. Especially in a two-part, two, you know. Well, you don't have a proportion. Well, we, uh, like, um, we don't have a proportion of representation systems are first past the post. And we and Manchester City will be the first and second past the post. Josh, Mike, I'm going to tell people um, that I also saw some things in that match that concerned me. 
And as our good boy Birdcamp said, he said, I don't have the energy to discuss all of the second half penalty claims. Maybe that's how they get you by grinding you down with confusion. But George, we go back a long time. We have seen this playbook. Christ George with with VAR, <laughs> which I used to, which I was one of the biggest advocates. They couldn't find a penalty. It's like searching for a needle in a haystack. According to Ephraim Okoku, I hope I got this, this pronunciation right. Uh, a Bournemouth player would have to actually literally catch a ball, George, to fucking get a penalty. Jesus Christ, George. Yeah, the, 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 I've watched them all, the, the, the handballs. And, and, and there was one in particular that looked that it was a stonewall penalty. Uh and I think if the referee had given any of them, or if the referee had given all of them, VAR yeah. would have overturned any of them. Right. Uh, so I think they're reluctant now under Howard Webb uh, to overturn what the referee gives. It has to be, it literally does have to be him stretching out and catching it rather than. Right. And, and even then they didn't. I mean, there was one at West Ham in a West Ham game and. Uh, well, I'm not been against Chelsea, but he probably saved it. He almost died full length. And put it... <laughs> you mean the kind where you stretch your arm? arm yeah. off the yeah. Nobody and, can and, see this on the and screen, guys. And you didn't give it. So if they're not going to give that, they're certainly not going to give uh, any of those. But I saw another one in the first half where the ball's coming down from the sky. Right. Thomas Hecker puts out his foot to for a first touch to kill the ball, yeah. not trying to kick it, he's put his leg out to to control the ball to kill it to uh, for a, and the guy, the, the Bournemouth player, kicked his leg from behind. Blows it to him. That's exactly right. <laughs> kicked his leg from behind and upended him. Obviously, he's already standing on one leg because he's got one leg up in the old time. And he kicked the, the leg that was in the air and knocked him off his feet. And it, it wasn't, I don't really know if it was looked at. And I thought, <laughs> no, is there anywhere on the pitch, anywhere, that's a foul. And right. if it's a foul, then it's a fucking penalty. And they didn't give it. So, Cameron yeah, Cameron. it's just Cameron. unbelievable. Think... But, no, the one with Steve, the one with Steve, I'm sorry, go ahead. In fairness, in fairness to yeah. the referees and VAR, I think it's across the board that they're not giving those as easily now as, and and everybody were crying out for that for us not to be re refereeing the game with VAR, yeah. and now they're doing it. Everybody's you, when it's your team, yeah. you want the re the, you want it re refereed by VAR, but when it's the opposition team, it's not a clear. <laughs> well, it's not a clear error, error. so why is VAR even looking at it? So, yeah. is that was that a clear error? Was it? I don't think it was. You know, what I mean? but when it's yours, yes, it's your team. Oh, yeah. that was a stonewall penalty. Yes. Well, you know, we we were at home and we were bathed for blood. But I think the one with Stevens, when Stevens literally down here, George, and elbowed it onto the onto the uh, the, the upright. I think. Well, there was, was another one where the ball was going through to. Uh, I think it was Vieira played it. He sort of cut it back, lifted it back, and it was going to go straight to Smith Rowe. And they put, there was a hand out, <laughs> hand out, knocked it, and knocked it down. And he, he knocked it down in front of him. And he could, then he just played away with it. And you're thinking, well, hang on, that's good. That's the Stop the ball going for a shot. On her. I think so, that's the guy who scored the goal. What's his name again? Um, I, I don't remember. Yeah, whatever his name is. He's a nice midfielder, by the way. Um, George, the reason why I bring this up is I don't want... Well, it's inevitable. But um, uh, 2007-8, we were exactly 26 matches up, like just like today. We Eduardo scored 
a worldly at Blackburn. Gave us a, that, that in those days, we were the people knowing that, that Blackburn was a very difficult team to beat. <laughs> then the next match, we were on top of the league, I think, by five points. 26 matches. I can go back to the Wikipedia. And we, of course, everybody knows we went to Birmingham and Edward was broken. Now, there's no risk. I don't think that the refs are going to allow it, you know, because of VAR and all that. You you know, swinging your foot mightily at, in the direction of any player and breaking them. But I would just like to sum that note because we ended up third. Yeah, we did. You know, uh, Manchester United end up 87, Chelsea 85, us 83. I mean, it's 10 yeah. games, it was 12 matches to go. Yeah, and, it was, uh, it, it, it was, it was, not, it was yeah. more than just Eduardo. Eduardo was the straw that broke the camel's back. Yes. I mean, we'd already lost Rosicky for the season by that yes. point. Mm -hmm. And uh, Van Persie was starting to be in and out of the team. Adi Bayor had basically been playing every game and just ran out of steam towards the end of the game. Yes. Towards the end of the season. Eduardo was taken out of the game. Uh, everything just went tits up. Poor well, Fabregas and those fellas were like... Fabregas had started to pick up uh, hamstring injuries, yeah. miss, missing the odd game. So that, that was that was horrible. So we, obviously that could happen again if, if, but, if it's a load of injuries. But That's my point, George, before you go on, because... I don't know if you think any of these injuries that were beginning to suffer. Trussard just went down from muscular injuries and he went straight down the tunnel, you know, George. I was noticing that. Yeah, well, if it's his groin, that, that mm -hmm. doesn't fix very quickly. That'll be three or four weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, I... But but Reese Nelson's yes. fit and available. Eddie will be back soon. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jesus is almost ready to play again. So... I, you know, and we've got uh, cover in midfield now. It looks like Vieira can hold his own. Yes. Uh, you know, he looks very lightweight, pre, but he, he looks like he's acclimatised, so he can be useful. We've got uh, Jorginho, who's more than useful. He was. He, what kind so, of injury is he carrying, George? Who? Jorginho. He was just sick. Oh, just, just, just oh, I'm, good. I'm, I'm happy to know that. Quite, quite frankly, I think he's a very important player for us in the running. So, we've got more options now than we did in 2008 for cover. And, and to, uh, yeah. some and of our honest, best George, players coming back. And to be honest, George, we have more cover to support what you're saying. I interrupted you as I usually am want to do. Not a good interview. <laughs> but um, uh, Arteta is getting there. Or is there? He's showing. I mean, the, what he did yesterday in terms of his selection was is preparing for the running. You know, yeah, he yeah, did, did, and every credit to him. And half time, off comes Thomas Aku, and all, he obviously yes. wanted to rest Ben White, but needs must. He didn't wait till his seventieth minute. He brought him on half time. Uh, it was clear Smith Rowe was struggling, and. Uh, even though he, he didn't come on till the 20th minute, he whipped him off wow. uh, at 60 minutes. There's so there. he, he, only, he only got 40 minutes, didn't he? Yeah. And, uh, you know, normally you don't like to do that. You don't like to substitute. There's a bit of a stigma about yes. a substitute yes. being substituted. Yes. But, you know, he did it and uh, and it, it made the difference. Uh, Reese Nelson, an assist and a goal. Right. So, he made the right decisions, and uh, I think it looks like you say not just as the team more able. Arteta looks more able now. Definitely, and we have to always say that because we were. I mean, so he, he rested Granite Xhaka, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, and brought him on. Brought him on in the eighty-something minute when yeah, he. Was, yeah, you know, I mean, yeah. when he realized he needed to stiffen up the midfield, yes. If it was me, I have to admit, I'd have been tempted to be bringing him on at half time. Uh, but, yeah. but he resisted that temptation. Uh, and uh, and rightly so, because I did think Vieira did all right yesterday. 
He looked. He looked good. You need you need to show confidence in them, George. Yeah, That's what yeah, yeah, did. You, you know, need to show it, confidence in them. It would have been a it would have been a bit of a blow to him if he yeah. had dragged him off. You know, yeah. I think it was his uh, was it only his second start or something. Yes. And yes. He, he dragged him off at half time for for no apparent reason, just to bring a slightly better player on. Right. You know that, that that's a bit of a heartbreaker, but he didn't. He gave him till the 80th minute, and then he he brought Jacker on. So I think he made all the right calls. But it's easy to say that when it goes right. Yes, it? yes. You know, if, we, if we don't, if we hadn't made a comeback, if we lost two 0 there would have been all hell to pay, wouldn't there? Why, yes. why is why is Jacker not playing? So right. he's not going to play it instead of party. And yes, yeah. Everybody be asking questions. You know, everybody's yeah. Captain Hindsight. Nobody's asking questions because there's no questions to be asked because we won. Exactly. And that's why I am just uh, bringing these points up because you're most vulnerable when you're in these heights of ecstasy, you know, George. Um, and, of course, every, and we have been, a, both of us have been around long enough. I don't want to say me but anybody. Many of us have been around long enough to say football is just like life. You're most vulnerable when you're on top. When you think that you have this thing all so right, up. Man, where is this going? On no, top just, of, just just making the on, point. On that. top in moments of ecstasy. Oh yeah. You, <laughs> you I was, where is this podcast gone off the rail? <laughs> George, I think you well, sex like out of it. <laughs> George, it was you know I was making that point, and I was like, it is, it is my, I was I was thinking that George, be careful, shut up. <laughs> But anyway, George, I think we have beat the, this horse to death. The momentum is with us. The, the force is with Arsenal. Um, and we hope that it continues despite the dangers that lurk ahead. You're, you have the final word, my friend. As the Mandalorian would say, this is the way. <laughs> there you go. Well, uh, um, uh, friends, supporters... Uh, thanks for listening in. Remember to give us a like, subscribe, repost if you think that what we are saying is worthwhile. <laughs> thanks again, George. And we'll get together again now next week after our game against Fulham. Okay, okay. See you that's next one. week. Yeah. And hopefully that, I think, away, but that's one we should win, but we can't, you know, write this in before <laughs> the game. Well, they're in the top half, aren't they, Fulham? Yes, yes. So it won't be easy. Yes, yes, it won't be easy. Um, I haven't seen much of them, but I see a little of them. I don't know if they are. Well, hopefully, I'll get. If they are playing today. I'll, I'll get a look at them, but I'm, I'm not sure. All right, George, take care. Yeah. Bye, yeah. guys. Until we meet again. Bye. Bye.